If you're ready to streamline and automate your intake process for your business, you don't want to miss this video. I'm going to be going step by step through how you can build a form using Airtable, collect data from people who are interested in your product or service, and then make sure that they automatically get to the right place. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to get organized and automated with your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, definitely check the links below this video. I will include a link to our free Airtable crash course, which will help you get up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. But without further ado, let's get into the meat of today's video and just jump into my screen here. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that I have a table for requests. Now, the idea here is that we are accepting request information from people who visit our website and want to learn more about our products and services. And we want to make sure we get them to the right place. Now, I don't know about you, but it's certainly frustrating when you get on the phone with somebody or you are working out a business arrangement only to find out half an hour into it that there's not a good product or a fit between you and the prospective client. So if you can get that out of the way up front, you're going to save a lot of time for your business and make sure that you're talking to people who are highly qualified leads. And so that's really what this is all about. So first and foremost, you'll see we've got a field here just walking through this table. I've got first name and last name, pretty standard stuff on a form, email, what company you know, you're representing, uh, what website you're coming from. And then, you know, a couple of qualifying questions. So description, meaning, you know, describing the business uh, that, that you're in or the industry that you're in, the revenue. And you'll see here we've got a couple of different options just to get a gauge for where they are in terms of their you know life cycle of their business. Uh, then also goals, getting an understanding of what they're looking for, uh, financial status. This is I, I don't really love this question. I always feel a little bit awkward, just socially awkward asking it but it comes in really handy qualifying leads this way because frankly, if they don't have access to financial resources and can't pay for your services, it's best for you to know that up front before you, you know, spend an hour with them trying to get, uh, you know, a solution for them. Uh, then of course, if you're looking uh, at the next question, that would be the type of help they're looking for. The idea here is maybe you've got a couple of different products or services that you have, and depending on how they answer this question, you might direct them to certain, uh, you know, certain products or services that you offer. And then of course, uh, you may also ask if they want to be added to your email list. If you include this on this particular form, uh, you don't need a separate form necessarily for them to opt into your email. They can kind of get it all done in one place, which is kind of cool. And then lastly is outcome. And this is going to be a subjective outcome to this information that they filled out. So basically the idea here is that as the uh, prospective client fills this information out, they're going to do that through a form on your website. And then someone inside your organization is going to make a, a determination as to where to send that person next, right? Now, I should pause here and say that you could fully automate this system by making this outcome something that is uh, dependent on their answers. That is to say that this outcome would be automatically populated depending on what they score or answer in the other parts of the form. Personally, I don't like to do that because I think that it's important to have a little bit of a personal touch and there's an element of subject uh, subjectivity that comes in here but you could fully automate it and have this be uh, you know, a, a completely um, automatic output. But before we get into you know, the, the automation itself, let's talk about the form. And so really what we can do is using Airtable, just build a form inside of this database. And so by going, by going over here to the intake form, you can see that I tossed together a pretty simple form already, and it has all of those fields here uh, you know, available here. Now, one thing you'll notice is that anywhere that I had uh, a longer question that had multiple options, that is a single select field, I like to see these in the list view. I think it's a little bit cleaner. If you do the drop down, then they actually have to click and, you know, select one. So personally, and this is just a personal thing, I like list. The other thing you'll notice is that I've made all these fields required. You could opt to do this with another form software outside of Airtable. But to keep this simple and clean, I'm just going to build the form right inside of Airtable and have that information automatically populate when this form is submitted. 
The only piece of information that doesn't exist on this form, as I already mentioned, is the outcome, because that's something that we are going to internally decide once we've reviewed the submission. So that's really the setup here. The last piece here is creating a view for each of the potential outcomes. This has more to do with the automation, so I'll be getting into that when I start getting into the automated part of this, which we're kind of ready to dive into now, but before I do uh, spend time on automation, I want to quickly thank our sponsors at stacker.app. If you're not familiar with Stacker, they have built an incredible user portal for us to basically give us a layer on top of an Airtable database. So if you need your users, uh, perhaps their external clients, and they you want them to only see certain things in your Airtable database or only edit certain fields, this is a fully customizable user interface that you can have people log into with your own customer or your own uh, branding and have them interact with your Airtable database. So if you're looking for a custom portal, if you're looking for a, a really nice user interface for your database, look no further than Stacker. Make sure that you check out the link below in the description of the video and be sure to use GAP15, that's G-A-P-1-5, to get 15% off at checkout. All right, so back to the actual automation then of this. Let's assume that we have uh, we want to build an automation for a particular outcome. So in this example, let's say that somebody filled out our form. So let me flip back to that form and uh, and just open that really quickly. And I'll fill this out just with my own, you know, fake information here. All right, and you see that when I submit that form, I get a nice exit uh, exit message here that says, thanks for the information, our team will review and respond to your request within a business day. So then the customer isn't left hanging and of course uh, we can now look at these unanswered questions. So what I'm looking at here in particular is a view inside of our database where the outcome has not been filled out. This is an empty outcome, obviously we have yet to decide, but once we do decide it will be removed from this view and placed in one of the other views. So let's suppose that internally we reviewed this uh, form submission and we decided that this particular prospective client was a great fit for our services and we said that the outcome would be a good fit for development. Now, of course, you could have any number of outcomes here. You could have bad fit. You know, you might have three or four different services that you offer. So you could list all of them here and you'd have an automated process built for each one of them. In this, in this case, I'm imagining they're a prospective development client for us, so we're gonna move them into that category. And as soon as I make that selection, they disappear from this view, but you'll notice that they do pop into our development view. And this particular view has only the outcome uh, development. So anything that doesn't have an outcome of development will not show up in this view. And so now we can get to that automated process. So what is that gonna look like? Let's build it from scratch together on Zapier. So I'm going to go into Zapier and I'm going to click in the upper left corner, make a zap. And the trigger event here is Airtable. This is the uh, thing that sets our automation into motion. So we're going to have a specific record appear in the development view, because when it shows up in the development view, we want a very specific process to happen. So we choose new record in view, we connect it to the proper Airtable account. And now we need to get to our base. So I'm going to look up that intake example because that's the name of this base. And I'm going to pop into our requests table. That's the table where this trigger event will live. And then the specific view, if you remember, is called the development view. So I'm going to continue and pull in some sample data and we should see the data that I just set up a moment ago. And there it is. This is the uh, information that I filled out when I filled out the form moments ago. We're going to continue from here. Now we have to build whatever that process is. So maybe we're going to say, hey, thanks. Uh, we would love to chat more. Would you schedule some time on our Calendly link? Or uh, maybe we're going to send them an email that says, hey, uh, you know, please let us know some time that we can connect. Uh, we'd love to talk more about this. You know, whatever that process looks like for you is, you know, perfectly uh, is perfectly great. It just it's completely unique for each of us. And so let's say that it was an email that we wanted to send. We could build a send email step into this automation here. And we're just gonna set that up right here. And we're gonna send it to the email address that came from that Airtable record. 
So that is the address example right there. Uh, this could be from, you know, you'll, you'll of course want it to come from you. So in this case, I'm sending a, an email from myself to myself, but you know, it won't always be like that. And then we could say, uh, thanks for filling out the form. And everywhere that we want to bring in information from the submission, from the request they put in, we can. So, for example, we might say, hi, first name in here. And now every time we do this, or every time this automation is performed, the first name will be respective of whatever they filled out on that form. So in this case, I might say, hi, Gareth. Uh, thanks for your interest. We'd love to chat more. What's a good date and time for you? And then, you know, we can go ahead and send that email out. Now, the last couple pieces I want to take care of here is you might need to move this data either from one database to another. If you have, let's say, like an intake database and then an actual like live clients database, you might move it from one to the other. You might uh, want to update information uh, back in your initial database. There are usually additional steps that have to happen to the contact in your database as part of this automation. In this example, I've built a contacts table on the back and I built a companies table on the back. So I want to actually create the contact and the company as a prospective lead, which is different from my data set of requests, right? Maybe only, you know, certain, certain uh, qualified leads get to that stage. And so in this example, I'm going to just add that over. Now, generally speaking, I don't like replicating data like this inside of my automations because I feel like it's a little redundant. But in this case, when the request comes in, we're asking information about them personally as a, as a contact and then also about the business. So we do need to make sure that we create proper records where the, the person and the business are connected but are separate entities inside of our database. You'll see what I mean as I build out this automation, but let's go ahead and build the next step, which will create the contact. In this case, we're going to create the contact name, the first name, last name, and the uh, uh, the email. So inside of Airtable, that will be the app that we're choosing here, or the software. And we're gonna do a find record because if this person already exists in our contact database, of course, we don't want to update them or we don't wanna recreate them, I should say. So we're gonna find the record. And of course, here's where we look at the base again. We're gonna do an intake. And we're gonna look at the table of contacts now. And we're gonna to look to see if the email already exists for that person. So we're using the email that they provided in the request form from step one. And we're comparing that to the email field in our contacts table in step two. Now, if we find a match, then we're gonna move on to the next step. But if we don't, then we're gonna create that contact. So if it doesn't already exist, we're gonna create this contact and we are going to bring in the first name here, the last name here, and the email address here. Those are the steps for creating that contact. And now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and test this particular step out. And if we go back into our Airtable database, we will see that we've just added a new contact with the first name, last name, and matching email. But we're not done yet. The last step is going to be to add that company information to our Airtable database. So similarly here, we're going to come in and uh, either, well, we're gonna start with a find record. And in this case, we're gonna look up that company name, or we could use the company website as well. We use the intake example as the base and the table is the company's table now. And we're gonna search for a field and we are going to, let's, let's use the website in this case. And we're gonna compare the website of a company to the website that they filled out in step one. Now, if that website exists, then great. If not, we're going to create that record. And we are gonna create it with the company name from step one. Remember, this is the information they gave us in the form. 
And then we are going to add the website again from step one, the information from the form. And then lastly, we're going to connect to the contact. The easiest and strongest way to do this is to grab the record ID from the contact that we identified or created in step three. So I'm going to grab that record ID. It always starts with REC. I'm grabbing that and continuing. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a test and I'm going to flip back into my Airtable database and you'll see now that not only is the contact created or linked to the company, but also the company has been created and linked to the contact. So now, depending on what the next steps in our process are, you know, that the appropriate uh, team members can kind of take over at this role. And in the future, all we have to do once we've turned this zap on is as new information comes in, it's going to be displayed here in our requests table. And then all we have to do is choose an outcome. Once we've chosen the outcome, it will go ahead and automatically take those next steps. Of course, we do need to still build automated processes for all of the other outcomes, but you can do that using the exact same steps that I outlined for this example. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site, so swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.